Yeah. Come on, we can do better than that on this Thursday evening. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, let's lift him up tonight. Come on, give him a third. Give him a worthy Thursday night praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Give him a worthy Thursday night. Hallelujah. How many know that this is the day that the Lord has made? We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Anybody grateful to be in the house on tonight? I don't know about you, but God's been good all week long. God can't help but be good. That's his nature to be good. He's good in the morning. He's good in the noonday. He's good when the sun goes down. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to just give God a worthy, victorious Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Grateful. We are grateful people. We are grateful people. Hallelujah. That song, Mr. Gardner. Are you just warming up? Was that a song where you were? Okay, it sounds good. I was hoping I could, whatever it was, I was going to flow with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just take a moment to give him thanks. Come on. Come on. I'm so grateful. I'm mighty grateful. Hallelujah. God is a wonder. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, for he, for he is worthy to be praised. Come on. Oh, let us magnify the Lord. For he, for he is worthy to be praised. Somebody say, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed be, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Come on, Judah. Blessed be, blessed be the rock. Blessed be, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, come, oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy, for he is worthy to be praised. Sounds good. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he, for he is worthy to be praised. Somebody shout Hosanna. Blessed be, blessed be the rock. Blessed be, blessed of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be, blessed be of my salvation. Magnify the Lord. For he, for he is the worthy church. Is he worthy? Oh, oh, magnify the Lord. We don't magnify anything else. For he is worthy. Does somebody say Hosanna? Jesus. Jesus is. Jesus is the rock. Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Hosanna. Oh, Jesus. Jesus is. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody got a testimony they want to share on tonight? We are testing. Joseph came quick. Give him praise, son. So, um, this is the same thing as my other testimony. So, um, um, so, um, a, a day ago, um, so like when it was my last chapel, I, I, I was like getting nervous and stuff and I started saying that um that I was just encouraging myself then when I got there at half of the chapel then um, I wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost the third time and then and and then at that many at that minute he did it <laughs> Wait a minute. Did he say he did it? He did it. Yeah. You said you got the Holy Ghost? Yeah. If, if Jojo said he got the Holy Ghost, we're going to celebrate God fulfilling Jojo with the Holy Ghost. Come on, you to give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love that he loves God. 
I wish we had more young people that love God like that. That was on fire for the Lord. Lord, set us on fire. Lord, set us on fire. Set us on fire. Burn with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a wonder. Any other testimonies tonight before we bring the first minister up? What do you want the Lord to say? Well done. My good and faithful servant. What do, what do you want the Lord? Come on, Judah. What do you want? What do you want the Lord? Oh, what do you want? I want to hear him say, Well done, my good and faithful. What do you I'll never forget what you Jesus, Jesus, I'll never forget how you said me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. How can, how can I forget what you've done for me? Come on, Judah. How can I forget? You said, Yeah, how can I forget? Jesus, I'll never. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. How you brought me out. How you picked me up. How you save my soul? How you save my soul? I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. Hallelujah. If he loved me, dying he saved. Very, very he kept. She's for rising. Forever, one day. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together. We can have church on a Thursday night. Put them sad together. Put them sanctified hands together. Come on. Sound like old church. Yeah. <laughs> I won't, I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. How you pick me up? How you save my soul? How you change my name? Put it on heaven's road. I won't forget. I won't forget. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells keep Somebody say joy bells. Yes, joy bells. Joy bells.
gonna have our ministers come at this time. Elder Rocky Goat Gross is going to come with Psalm 147 and 7, followed by Minister Laquisha Glasgow. Philippians 4 and 6, come on, let's receive our very own man and woman of God. Come on, let's receive them and say, preach the word. Let the Lord use you. Joy bells keep ringing. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. It's greatly to be praised. I want to thank God for allowing me to be here. And I want to thank Pastor for giving me the opportunity. Amen. Tonight, um, we have uh, Pastor has given me one scripture. And, uh, and I'm going to try to rip all the meat off the bone. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, tonight, uh, our scripture is the 147th number of Psalms. Amen. The 147th number of Psalms. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give God a hand praise. This is the month of Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. We know that every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. Do you have the word? Do you have it? We're, we're going to read our, my, uh, our verse tonight is verse 7. It says, sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father God, we just thank you. Hallelujah for this opportunity, Lord God. And I pray, Father God, that I... As I decrease, that you will increase within me, Lord God. Hallelujah. And, and just speak through me, Lord. Hallelujah. That, that you've allowed me to know, Lord God. I don't know it all, Father God, but I know that you do. So, Father, we ask, Father God, that you will preach, Father God, until it's time to sit down and not be over. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the heart unto our God. Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I know my God deserves the best. Amen. Yes, he, does. he deserves the best. Yeah. And you know, we know that this month is Thanksgiving, but I'm gonna tell you, every day is a Come day on. of Thanksgiving. Come on. Come on. Because Hallelujah. What could we do without Jesus? Right. What could we do without our God? Yes, sir. And and and. Uh, in one of the books it says that, uh, well, Jesus said, without me, you can, can do nothing. nothing. Come on, yes, sir. So every day is a day of thanksgiving. We have something to give God thanks yes, sir. and yes, praise sir. for each and every day. Right. But, you know, I have to treat this verse uh, like the, the therefore verse. If you ever run into a verse that has therefore there as the first word, right. you need to go up, a, bump up a few verses and see what therefore is what. Therefore, okay. <laughs> Amen. So I'm, I'm a, uh, if, if, if you'll indulge me, I'm gonna go to the to the first verse, and it says, "Praise ye the Lord, for it is good yes. to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely." And you know what I um, I know what homely means, but I didn't know what comely meant, so I had to go look it up. And I was glad I looked it up because calmly means having a pleasing appearance. All right. All right. Having a pleasing appearance. You know, God wants to, he wants us to, to be pleasing in his sight. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. We, and we want to be pleasing in his sight. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. We want to give God our best. 
because God has given us his best, you know, and, and, uh, you know, as I, you know, kept reading, you know, down the, the, the verses, uh, verse two says, my, uh, oh, whoa, 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 okay, verse two says, uh, the Lord doth built up Jerusalem, he gather it together, the outcast of Israel. And, you know, I'm, I'm reading these verses about, you know, praising. And I don't mind praising the Lord. I love to praise him. Right. But there may be somebody out there that don't know why we praise him. Right. We right. praising him because you are. Amen? Right. Y'all get that tonight. Right. You praise him because he is. Right. Right. And we better be glad that he is. Because if he ain't, we ain't. Amen? Amen. God is worthy to be praised. So, I, I, you know, I agree with Pastor, and I thank God for him because, you know, I I, I, I used to talk to, to, to Elder Outlaw. Uh, I, I thought it was three years, but he said it was five years. He was trying to pull me in and pull me in. But, uh, but you know, I, I thank and, and praise God because I've learned so much. I've learned so much, you know. And, and you know, even the, the, the smallest, the minutest thing means something. Amen. All right, okay. You know, to, to just bring some credence to the scripture, you know, um, um, Pastor, I just love to, 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 to start at the beginning, you know, you, get, you know, just get a little bit of the origin. And, and a little bit of the origin says, uh, where, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Praise the Lord. Somebody get me Genesis 1 and 26. 1 and 26. But you got to start at the beginning. It's not going to take long. Somebody got it? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I, go ahead. Oh. My sister, and I want to just uh, 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 put, add, add a little. I don't want to add nothing. I don't want to take nothing away. Right. But but I just want to just emphasize on this verse. You know, God gives. Uh -huh. God gives us. Uh -huh. He just didn't say, "Let us make man in our likeness and in our image." He said, "Hey, listen. Uh, uh, rather than just making them, we're gonna give them some stuff, All okay?" Right. And God said, "Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have." Dominion. Uh -huh. That's a gift. All right. Amen. To have dominion over something. Amen. So he gave us he gave us the keys to the kingdom. Right. Amen. He gave Amen. us the keys. He said, let them have dominion over the fish and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over everything that creepeth that creepeth upon the earth. Come on. God gave man dominion. He gave him something. He, he had a sense of ownership. Amen? Amen? And guess what? By the third verse, he had given it all. By the third chapter, he had given it all away. He had given it all away. It said by the third chapter, it said man had lost his dominion. Because when the first creep came along, man disobeyed God. And therefore, he got fired. From that high paying job. He got fired. Come on, I'm trying to put a little humor in there too, Pastor. He got fired from that job. Then, because see, God, God gave and gave and gave. So when you when you sin, God's got to reel that thing back like you're reeling in the fish. He lost that good job. Then he got evicted from his first property. And then he lost his relationship. So there had to be one of the reasons. That, 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 that we're so uh, uh, um, uh, apt about giving God thanksgiving is because of the restoration that he did for us. If it wasn't for God, where would I be? Where would you be if it weren't for Christ? We thank God for restoring us. Amen? Because, see, uh, uh, because of man's disobedience, you know, it went on and on and on, and sin became bigger and bigger and uglier and uglier, and now... Kind of like today. Okay. Amen. Ain't nothing changed. The Bible says ain't nothing new under the sun. Oh, it just keeps on going over and over and over again. You know, so, so uh, um, you know, God's uh, chosen people, you know, the, the children of Israel, they had to go into bondage. Uh -huh. And they've been into bondage for a long time. 
See, you know, parents, when, when you talk about disciplining, God knows how to discipline. There are some people that went into, in, into Babylon that never came. They went in, but they never came out. You know? And then even when they came out, they still got a little stiff neck and had to walk around for about 40 years. You know? But God allowed the you know, the old to, 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 to drop off and then he, uh, you know, the children, you know, the, all the parents, you know, they were gone, but the children had grown up and he allowed them to enter into the land. So, so you know, we see how uh, when, when, when we're good, you know, when the children of Israel, see, this is our, this is our roadmap. You know, when the children of Israel were good, they got good stuff. They were protected. When it was time for them to fight battles and they were, and they did everything that God told them to do, they won all those battles. But it just took one person. They say one bad apple can spoil the whole bunch. When they got to Ai, they lost. Why? And, and it, was, it, was, it, was a, it, it was a couple million people. You know, but when they had that trial, they went house by house. They went, they went tribe by tribe until they, until they came to the culprit. You know? And he had taken a, a, a robe and, and a wedge of gold, you know, and, and he just didn't kill him by himself. He killed a, they, they, they put him in a, in a valley and stoned the whole family out. Killed the cattle and everything. Dogs there, everything had to go. Because God ain't playing. He wasn't playing then. He's not playing now. That first verse said, you know, uh, uh, where's it at? That first verse um, says pretty, pretty much just says praise God. You know when the when the when the Bible tells you to do something, you do it. We don't have to ask questions why, you know, and and uh, what for. You know, only thing we have I can't get it. It's all right, but you know, the scripture said praise the Lord on that first verse, and then it it tells in in, in verse two that the Lord. Just built up Jerusalem and gather it together, the outcasts. Because see, when 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 they got taken into captivity, you know, I mean, they they were dispersed everywhere. But see, God has a way. You know, God has a way of of bringing everything back together again. Amen. Yes, when 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 He brings you out and brings you into, it says He healed the broken heart and binded up their wounds. Amen. So you know, you may not see outside wounds. You know, but sometimes, uh, you know, wounds are inwardly. Sometimes people can be uh, sick in the head, you know, sick in the heart. Depression can te tear up a lot of things. But knowing God, knowing, you know, knowing the things that God did for us, you know, you know, God, when we got when we got so bad and he had to restore us, he had to send Jesus. He had to send Jesus. And there was one mission that Jesus was on. Even though he did a lot of things while, while, while he was down here in the flesh, he was here for one thing, and that was to die for us. So, you know, when the scripture says, praise the Lord and sing unto him with thanksgiving, we shouldn't question it. We should do it. When pastor and the praise team is up here trying to get you to sing, Get into it. Think about what the Lord has brought you through this week. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, but what Egypt did he bring you out of? Amen. What Egypt did he bring you out of? You know, all of us weren't born with a silver spoon in our mouth. All of us didn't uh, grow up on Rodeo Drive and in Beverly Hills. You know, some of us came, uh, you know, from, from the projects. You know, and we did the best. We could with what we had. Amen? Amen? And we had a good time, too. If you have, if you keep a right frame of mind, and if you keep a relationship with God, there's nothing that you can't accomplish. Amen. There's nothing you can't accomplish. So, when you're at your desk, that might be your Egypt. You know? When you're at your job, that might be your Egypt. You could be the only saint surrounded by a bunch of sinners. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to almost be taken in. Sometimes I got took in. And then God allowed me to get to myself and come to my senses. 
He says, son, you're my child. Amen. You need to check your crowd you're hanging with. Right you need to listen to the language that they're talking about. Come on, come on. How you going to fit in? Come on, come on. Huh? Church boy, how you going to fit in? Because just as soon as you tell them, hey, man, y'all stop all that cursing and stuff. I'm trying. I got, I'm on the wrong call. Oh, they're going to come against you. You're going to get beat and scorned. But you know what? The word, you know, by, by the power of God, we can make it through anything. Amen. God can bring you through a storm like nobody's business. You might be trying to describe it to somebody, but guess what? Nobody knows what you know. Nobody knows you like you and the Lord. Nobody knows what you've been through like you and Jesus. Amen. Amen. So when the when when the Word of God says praise, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. It says sing sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Well, what thanksgiving do I have? Well, thank God He woke me up this morning. Amen. He started me on my way. He allowed me to be in my right mind. Hallelujah. He put food. He put clothes on my back and food on my table. He allowed me to have a job where I can pay my rent. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He strengthened me. Hallelujah. That when the wind start blowing, I can hold on to his word. I can hold on to his unchanging hand. That's something to be thankful for. When God brings you out of your Egypt. Hallelujah. Our children sometimes can be our Egypt. If you don't do what the Bible say, if you don't train them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, they, they can be your Egypt. Because see, you got to get with them when they this when they this high. Because when they shoulder high, it's a little bit harder to get with them. But you can put them out. You can put them out. Amen. It's no telling what your Egypt is. You could be low on funds. You could be poor in health. Everybody has got. Everybody's had some health problems. What's my time, Pastor? <laughs> Hallelujah! I, I don't want to go over. But you know, er, everybody's had poor health. I've had poor health. I, you, you know, I, I, I never thought I'd be in the hospital for a long time for anything. Because I, I you know, I, I didn't eat healthy or anything like that. But I went through some things, and I needed some prayer. And 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 Sister Pastor, and I, I never saw you. I never saw you. But I was told. That assistant pastor and, and Minister Virgin came, took my picture when I was looking all thugged up. <laughs> I was like, ugly. And, and pastor came. I heard your voice. They said your son was there, you know. Um, but 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 I, I've been through some things, and God has brought me through, you know. The doctor said, uh, when, when I got to the hospital, he had oxygen ready because he didn't know if I was breathing or not. The only thing I knew was my tongue was hurting real bad because I bit through it, you know. So, you know, uh, uh, we thank, uh, being thankful for your health is something to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. You know, God has kept me. God will keep you if you want to be kept, yeah. regardless of the situation. Yeah. Boyfriend, girlfriend, right. wife, husband, stranger to stranger, God will keep you if you want to be kept. Only thing we have to do is be mindful and obedient. Praise the Lord. And this is one thing, uh, and I'm going to sit on down, Pastor, because <laughs> uh, but uh, this is one thing that this is just one uh, scripture that I wanted to read. Uh, it says in, in, in verse 4 of uh, 147 Psalms, it says He telleth the number of stars. He calleth them all by their name. Talking about God. If you have a hair fall down in the shower, he knows about it. You may not know about it, but he knows about it. If he's got billions of stars in the sky and he knows them all by name, that's a God that I want to serve. You know? When he brings me out of my troubles, you know, we, we promise God, Lord, Lord, if you just bring me through this, if you just bring me through that, I'll do this. We make all the covenants and promises with God. And, and, and halfway keep them, you know, may keep them for one week and forget them out the next week, you know. But guess what God does? He never forgets. And when we sometimes want to give up on ourselves, we can thank God he never gives up on us. Amen. He never gives up on us. Amen. Sometimes we think we've done so bad, so, so bad. Oh, I know God ain't going to forgive me now. But he does. If you come to him, he said, I'll never leave you 
nor forsake you. He said, I'll never see the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. If we be obedient, if we be thankful in Jesus. So give the Lord a hand praise for, 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 for his word. This is his word. And I thank God for his word. I thank God for his way. I pray that uh, that you've gotten something out of the word because guess what? It's in there. It's in there. Like Prego. It's better than Prego. It's in there. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. It is truly a blessing just to be in the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I anticipate just being here all throughout the day, just meditating, just to be able to be with the people of God. And I just want to give honor to the Lord and thank him for all that he is to me. And I truly thank him for my pastor and first lady. We have some of the best pastor and first lady ever. <laughs> I love them so much and their care for us. I truly thank God. I won't be before you long. Um, as been said, I'm coming out of Philippians 4, verse 6. Again, that's Philippians 4, verse 6. And it reads, be careful for nothing. Yeah. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. Amen. When I read the first part of this, I get excited because the first part says to be careful for nothing. In yeah. other words, for careful is to be worried, to be anxious, to be cautious. And I get excited because it tells us to be careful for nothing. <laughs> Meaning, I don't have to worry about nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when you understand that, you begin to walk differently because when things come your way, yes. you know you don't have to worry. You don't have to be cautious. You don't have to be anxious, right? And when you are anxious and worried and cautious, not only does it impact your body naturally from stress, but this response generally comes because one may not be trusting in the Lord completely. Come on, that's good. Or one may be trying to figure out what to do in their own ability. And I submit to you that those who are responding in this way, being anxious and worried, do so because they are either not confident or are uncertain of the outcome of what they stand in need of or what is to come. Amen. But again, I'm so excited to know that the Lord assures me not to worry about it. And right there, that's enough to give him thanks because he takes care of everything that I need. And I don't have to take no thought for anything because everything is supplied for me. And I know my father will take care of everything that is going on. I don't have to care for myself because I know it's in him that I live, move, and have my being. I don't have to protect myself because I know that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. So he says, be careful for nothing, but, but <laughs> in everything, in every situation or circumstance by prayer and supplication. What I love about prayer, it is a deliberate communication with Jesus. And when anything is done deliberately, it's done consciously and it's intentional. And with supplication, there's a form of asking. There's a petition, a request. You might beg or you might go to the Lord earnestly or humbly with respect. So now that I have consciously prayed and I have petitioned the Lord of my request, now I can give him thanks. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I know about y'all, but I'm so excited that I can pray to him, that I can petition him, and then I can give him thanks. Hallelujah. See, the word says prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. And some people miss that thanksgiving part. Some don't know how to be thankful for who he is. He is God all by himself. And he doesn't have to do the things that he do. So the, that I say, thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for me. 
Yeah. When he says with thanksgiving, that's gratitude. We celebrate the Lord. We give thanks unto him. We show appreciation to him because I can thank him in advance for what I need. Whatever I need, I can already thank him for it. Yeah. And, and some people may wonder, how can you thank the Lord for something you can't see physically or that you don't have at least? And I, I always remember that the Lord is Alpha and he's Omega. When you're Alpha, you're first. And when you're Omega, you're at the end. Because the story's already written, that means I already know the outcome of what's to happen. Hallelujah. So that's why you can give him thanksgiving. That's why you can praise him yeah. for what you're petitioning him for. When you have a heart of thanksgiving, you already know that it's done because he's Alpha and he's Omega. We have the right to give thanksgiving in advance because it's already done. But one thing God dealt with me is we must not confuse our request with his will. Amen. And I'll say it again. We cannot confuse our requests with his will. Our request is not to tell the Lord what to do. <laughs> our request is not to tell the Lord how life is going to operate. But our request, it allows us to communicate to the Lord through faith and declare his word over every situation in hopes to shift the direction the situation was intended to go. I'll say it again. Our request to the Lord is to allow us to communicate to him through faith and to declare his word over every situation in hopes to shift the direction that the situation was intended to go. So in other words, prayer is a constant invitation. And when you pray, it allows the Lord to step in and work on your behalf. We don't know what's best for us. Right, right. So even though we may have requests for the Lord, the Lord already knows what's for us and what's not. And, when, and, and, and prayer helps us to stay in constant communication with Jesus so that everything we do will be for his glory and his glory alone. Yes. And although there are some circumstances that we probably would like to change, it may not be God's will for it to happen. Right. You may feel like, Lord, I may be requesting this, but if not... <laughs> But if not, Lord, have your way because I know that you know what's best for me. Amen. And I love verse 11 in chapter 4. It says, not that I speak in respect of want, uh -huh. for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, yes. therewith to be content. Y'all got you to excuse me because I get excited with this. Because when you are content, you are satisfied. Yes. Ooh, and you only understand that satisfaction when you have been dependent on the Lord and not on what you think is best for you. You have to have a testimony that, Lord, if you don't do anything else, I am content because you have done enough. Yes. Some may not understand that, Lord, if you don't do anything else, I'm content because of what you have done. And for that, I am thankful. So can we seal this word just with a thankful praise we may not know, hallelujah, what you're petitioning the Lord for. But I guarantee you, your praise will produce a sound. Your prayer will produce a sound that will get the Lord's attention. And he will hear your cry. He will hear your cry. And don't give up. Don't stop praying for it. Continue to petition the Lord. We need to get desperate for him sometimes. And we need to say, Lord, if not, but if not, I'm thankful for what you've already done. I'm thankful that you gave yourself. I'm thankful that you gave me your spirit. I'm thankful that there's food on the table. Food on the table. I'm thankful, Jesus, that you woke me up this morning. Thankful to be used for all the things that I've done. Thankful that you cleaned me up, oh God. Thankful that my body, the old man, was crucified with him. I'm thankful, Jesus. That's what satisfaction means. When you're content, hallelujah, you may want things, but you begin to seek for the things that you need because you know it's the things that you need. That's the things that's going to get you through. I may want a car, but I need this. I may want something, but I need Jesus. So when you get what you need, that's how you get what you want. When you get what you need, that's how 
until you get what you want. And we want you, Jesus, on tonight. I hear you, Lord. We need to be satisfied with where he has us. We can't keep saying we may not have everything we need. Yes, we do. He's given us everything that we need. He gave himself as a sacrifice. The blood ran down. He is all that we need. And when we begin to understand that, we won't be wanting or seeking for anything. All the extra stuff is just a blessing. It's just addition to who he is. And it's not just about the earthly things. We desire the things of the spirit. Hallelujah. Because a new car ain't going to get me through the midnight hour. A new house ain't going to get me through. Hallelujah. The shadow of death. But it's the word of the Lord that shall stand forever. It's the word that will stand forever. When we seek his face, that shall stand. When we hear his voice, that will stand. When we put holiness back to where it belongs, that's where we stand. Hallelujah. But God, you have a grateful people in this place. Yes, Lord. We are satisfied just with you. You could have left us at that point. But you continue to cover us, protect us, provide, watch us, watch over us. And Jesus, for that, we give you thanks. Can we release a thankful praise? Give him a worthy praise. Give him a worthy praise. Come on, Judah, give him a worthy praise. Everything with prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, we let our requests be made known unto God. Even the prayer that you prayed today, put a praise on it. Seal it with a praise. Lord, we thank you. You know what we have need of before we ask. And we thank you that it's already done. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, it's already done. What you believe in God for, it's already done. Hallelujah, it's already done. Hallelujah, it's already done. Get your clarity in the atmosphere. Lord, we thank you for it's already done. Hallelujah. Come on, let's thank God for the word tonight. Come on, let's thank you, Brother Gross and Miss Laquisha. My soul has been blessed. My soul has been blessed this week and this month with the ministers ministering the word of God. And I'm so glad to see each of you in the house of the Lord on this evening. Isn't God a wonder? Isn't God a wonder? Isn't God a wonder? Come on, isn't he a wonderful God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Aren't we a grateful people? I'm so glad that we have a relationship with the Lord that we don't wait till a holiday to say thanks. God's got a grateful people in, in Judah life. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. Those that are streaming, we thank God for you streaming tonight. Hopefully something has been shared that would touch your soul and impact your soul. Just be thankful. If you haven't heard anything tonight, just be thankful. Just be thankful. Amen. Don't curse tomorrow. Don't curse. I see people cursing 2020, talking about I'm ready for 2021. You better stop doing that. You better thank God for every day that you wake up and you're alive. The Lord, and every day that we wake up, the Lord made it. Amen? I ain't looking forward to 2021 yet. I'm still enjoying 2020. Pastor, you see, you said you enjoy it. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. How can I not enjoy it? I got Jesus. Woo! I think Minister LaQuee said, if you got Jesus, you got everything you need. And all the other stuff is a bonus. Thank God for my need and thank you for the bonus. God, I thank you. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. Amen. We're still in our praise consecration month. Remember, remember, we're still in our praise consecration as we come and get prepared to come and worship with uh, the people of God on Sunday. Let's be thankful. Let's be grateful. Let's come in them doors, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. Amen. Thank God for my wife who ministered the word of God on this past 
Sunday on my in my stead. She wanted to go. I wanted her to go. Amen. Because I didn't want to be driving that many hours by myself, but I had to leave her here and go minister the word. And I thank God for this church. Y'all had a fire time on Sunday. It was lit up in here on Sunday. <laughs>